Hi everyone. Welcome to Dr. Strange MCH learning platform. Today we will be delving into the world of extrahepatic portal vein obstruction that is EHPBO and this series has been designed specifically keeping in mind the interest of junior trainees so that we can simplify this complex subject for better understanding. I have no disclosures and please read the detailed disclaimer in description. So some of these concepts I have touched upon in my previous video uh, in which I covered non-serotic portal fibrosis that was part of the non-serotic portal hypertension and so I will briefly touch upon those topics and uh, I request all my viewers to watch the previous uh, video series on non-serotic portal fibrosis for better understanding. So as all of you know that uh, the normal portal pressure is between 1 to 4 and if it is more than 5 it is called portal hypertension and when it, it crosses more than 10 mm of mercury it becomes clinically irrelevant. The term non-serotic portal hypertension that is NCPHT it encompasses two entity that is non-serotic portal fibrosis NCPF and extrahepatic portal vein obstruction that is EHPBO. So it is a heterogeneous group of disease in which there is a portal pressure more than 10 due to intra or prehepatic vascular lesion in the absence of cirrhosis or Birdchild syndrome. So you have to understand that in this entity uh, the liver is inherently normal to begin with there is no pathology in the liver per se and uh, the pathology which is affecting uh, the portal pressure is before the liver or before the sinusoids so uh, we have discussed this before also so in these uh, entity that is ncpf and ehpbo uh, the hepatic venous uh, pressure gradient HBPG is less than the portal pressure which will be raised in cirrhotic patients. And for better understanding do watch uh, this uh, video series on non cirrhotic portal fibrosis which is available on our YouTube channel and, and on our app. And for the students uh, and enthusiasts I must recommend a video available on YouTube by uh, Professor SK Sreen. So, uh, sir, uh, Dr. Sreen is the legend uh, if you follow this portal hypertension topic and there is a long video available on YouTube uh, in the name of uh, master class on portal hypertension by SK Sreen. You must watch that video and many topics and many uh, concepts I have taken from this video so you will have a better understanding. I will share the link for this video also in description of this video. Briefly, the extrahepatic portal vein obstruction is uh, is cause of the portal hypertension in 10%. The pre sinusoidal that is non serotic portal fibrosis 7%, and majority of the chunk that is 80% will be because of the cirrhosis, and out of which maximum will be because of the alcoholic liver disease. Post sinusoidal will be hepatic venous outlet obstruction that is Birdchild syndrome. The entity which will interest the surgeons or uh, surgeons in training will be non serotic portal fibrosis and portal vein uh, obstruction that is EHPBO and NCPF as highlighted in this picture. So uh, the pathology is before the sinusoid, before the uh, this portal blood is draining into the sinusoids. So in NCPF as I discussed earlier, the obstruction will be in secondary or tertiary level of the portal vein. There is a fibrosis around the portal vein which lead to the narrowing and as you can understand if there is a narrowing around a tube then the pressure will build up uh, because of the, that there is upstream build up of the pressure which we have already discussed and in EHPBO then the portal main is replaced gone it may be thrombosed uh, from the worth or later on some thrombotic event occurs and we will discuss more in this video so the portal main is replaced by collaterals uh, name given is cavernoma formation so as in all my videos, I will give you a clinical case scenario so that you can correlate these theoretical discussion with practical life in a better way. All these videos are as close to a reality as possible. So you have a better learning experience. So uh, we had this 40 year female who presented to us with history of upper GI bleed in the form of hematemesis and melina with fullness in the left upper quadrant for last two months there was no other comorbidity 
on abdominal examination there was a massive splenomegaly the workup was as follow so she was anemic hb 7.9 the wc count was 2600 only normal range as you know is above 7000 to 11000 in our lab and the low platelet count of 90000 again normal limit will be above 1.5 lakhs there were multiple reports of the complete blood count in which hp was low so friends uh, this is the ultrasound report of the same patient remember her age is 40 so everything has a bearing on interpretation of these reports and you will understand better as the discussion will evolve so the liver is normal in size and echo texture no focal hypo or hypochromic lesion seen having said so means the liver is essentially normal mild ascites is there as reported again remember this report also and so as i said in extrapatic portal vein obstruction the pathology is before the sinusoid so the liver is essentially normal gallbladder shows a bilirubin sludge okay the portal vein is replaced by multiple tortuous veins suggestive of cavernous transformation of the portal vein the cbd evaluation was sub suboptimal the spleen is enlarged measuring 22 into 13 cm and normally echo texture so trainees just remember this picture of the ultrasound and this is very classical for extra hepatic portal vein section the liver is normal the portal vein is not seen is uh, led to the multiple tor tor tortuous veins replacing the portal vein uh, leading to the cavernoma formation and spleen is enlarged so as i said earlier also so this is a classical picture only thing which is not fitting in the picture is ascites so we will discuss uh, in the uh, upcoming video so this is the ct scan report of the same patient and here again the liver is normal the gv uh, nodule thickening ignore this finding along with the stone the portal vein is not visualized and replaced by multiple venous collaterals which are seen at the porta hepatis along the course of portal vein multiple venous collaterals are seen in gv wall collaterals are also seen in perigastric gastrosplenic region near g junction along splenorenal region and spleen is enlarged measuring 24 cm in max so again friends these are classical the portal vein is not visualized so this there is a extra hepatic portal vein obstruction liver is normal uh, there is no pathology in the liver there are multiple collaterals so we are dealing with the replaced portal vein along with the multiple collaterals so we are dealing with the extra hepatic portal vein portal vein obstruction associated with portal hypertension and splenomegaly and if you remember the blood uh, report of this patient so we are having a bicytopenia also bicytopenia means there were two or three cell lines in fact in this patient we were having tricytopenia in the form of low hp uh, the low wbc count and low platelet count again uh, we will uh, rush through these uh, pics of the ct scan of the same patient and uh, i recommend you if, if there is any doubt you can pause the video and uh, carefully watch these pictures because these are very classical for a ehpbo so a liver is normal there is splenomegaly and as i said earlier if you can see the spleen after the last cut of the liver like in the lower panel last picture the liver is barely visible still we have a large spleen uh, occupying the whole left side of the abdomen so we are having splenomegaly uh, there is a tortuous splenic artery because liver is uh, the spleen is such enormously in large spleen then we will have a more flow in the uh, basically splenic artery so it led to the tortuosity and the collaterals are also visible and there is a radio opaque shadow in the gb fossa and if you remember the ct scan picture of the ncpf patient here you can see that the portal vein is not visible so uh, there is no portal vein and there are multiple collaterals as highlighted and spleen is enlarged in this picture few more cuts depicting the same finding so the points which i have uh, i have already discussed in my previous video i'll not waste time over here you can pause the video so this is the definition of hyperspinism please pardon me for this uh, 
not so good handwriting so uh, this is the basically clinical uh, profiling of this patient massive splenomegaly uji bleed ehpbo portal hypertension anemia by portal hypertension we are having this uh, collaterals or there is a hyperspalinism with bicytopenia or tricytopenia so uh, this is the uh, clinical picture in this patient so we are having this bleeder 40 year old lady uh, with these findings on upper GI endoscopy, there were high grade viruses for which EVL was done by the gastro people. Uh, there were portal hypertensive gastropathy. These characteristic uh, of a splenic lump I have already discussed. For the portal hypertensive gastropathy, briefly, these are the basically abnormal collaterals in the wall of the stomach, leading to the uh, this portal hypertensive gastropathy (PHG) and uh, bleed from the PHG. That portal hypertensive gastropathy is very difficult to manage endoscopically. So, whenever we are dealing with a patient, such patient in which the endoscopist report portal hypertensive gastropathy, we should consider the possibility of shunt. About the grading of viruses, we have already discussed in NCPF. So I'm quite sure that uh, all of you might be dealing with such kind of patient in your uh, during your OPD visits. So what is the diagnosis and what's your plan for this patient? So uh, try to make some plan for this patient. Then we will discuss at the end of this video our plan, our management so that you can very well i mean uh, understand the this whole case scenario in a better way so friends we will end the first uh, bit part here and we will continue in the second part and for a better learning experience for exclusive early access to the premium content do download our app or join the channel membership the link for everything is given in description and pinned comments do like the content friends uh, share with your friends and hit the bell icon for all the future updates. Thank you very much.